Ah, springtime, a time of renewal, rebirth, and shorts that are probably too short for me to be wearing. As you can see, the splendor of nature is in full bloom in Ms. Rea's classroom. Whoa, this jade plant is growing like crazy. It must be because it has such a primo location to soak up the sun. Well, Justine, you're certainly right that plants need sunlight to grow. But does anyone know what the plants do with the sun? Plants use the sun to make their own food. Photosynthesis is Greek for make with light. That's right, Dimitri. In fact, I was just about to show you all a documentary on that very subject. Yes! Yeah. Love documentaries. Here we are in the Amazon, the world's largest rainforest. Take a moment to marvel at how plants turn mere sunlight into these massive wooden columns and leafy canopies. Hello, old friend, and a most pleasant vernal equinox to you. Oh, hi, Blossom. Great documentary, huh? Well... Uh-oh. Seeing breathtaking images of my rainforest brethren is truly a delight. But I think you might want to check where you get your videos. That narration was overgrown with inaccuracy. Inaccurate? Come on! The narration was the best part of the whole film! You done? I am. So, Blossom, where exactly did our narrator lead us astray this time? Not that I like to make a habit of agreeing with him, but I'm fairly certain that plants make their own food from sunlight, and the food, in turn, makes them grow. Plants do make food in the presence of sunlight. I'm a bit of a gourmet chef myself. I specialize in locally sourced vegan dishes. <laughs> But the energy from sunlight doesn't become the branches and leaves. Trees' new structures are actually formed mostly from carbon dioxide and water. So that's why you weren't a fan of that documentary. Maybe it'd be helpful to see what Amar took from the rainforest video. Take a moment to marvel at how plants turn mere sunlight into these massive wooden columns and leafy canopies. Oh no, plants don't magically convert sunlight into some kind of leaf buffet. Don't let your petals get all wilted, Isabella. We just need to be careful with what students take from these shortcuts. In this case, we need to make sure it's clear that energy isn't what becomes matter. You know what? I think we're going to skip the video for now. Now. When we talk about food as it pertains to plants, yes, Justine. Well, Dimitri said plants make their own food. But doesn't plant food come in boxes? Ah, uh, that's another common misconception. Your students have a lot of these, don't they? All students who live in the world have misconceptions, and only a fool would judge them for it. If anything, misconceptions often provide great starting points for learning. Speaking of, can we see why Justine thinks that plants rely on boxed food to grow? Most definitely. Magic Pro Plant Food. It's the food your plants crave. Pour it on and your plants will grow, grow, grow. Disclaimer, Magic Pro Plant Food does not utilize actual magic. I don't blame Justine for calling something that helps plants grow food. But as a member of the plant community, nothing you give me is my actual food. Plants' food is sugar we make ourselves by linking together atoms from carbon dioxide and water. But if it helps you grow, what's the harm in calling it food? Well, if you want kids to really understand the difference between plants and animals, it all comes down to chemistry. And food is pretty interesting chemically. The special thing about food is that it has to be both a source of chemical energy and a source of building materials for growth. Sorry, all this talk of food is making me hungry. Anyway, please continue. As I was saying, the special thing about plants is that we can make food through the photosynthesis reactions out of stuff that's not food. You poor animals have to scavenge it from other organisms. Calling fertilizer plant food does a disservice to the power of plants. Ah, so that's what you mean by flower power. 
Okay, we've got some interesting ideas on the table. Now let's think back to those giant canopy trees in the rainforest documentary. Where do you think they get enough food to grow that big? Well, if there's no one feeding them plant food from the box, I guess it's got to come from somewhere else, like the soil. Ah, uh, another common response. It looks like Justine isn't quite connecting her chemistry with her biology. Oh, totally. Wait, uh, what do you mean by that? It's difficult for students to think of a gas, like carbon dioxide, being able to form something as massive and substantial as a giant tree. But a chemical reaction doesn't have to start with a solid, like soil, and end with a solid, like a tree. Looking at the equation for photosynthesis is one concrete way to explain the chemical process. Take carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light energy to make glucose or sugar and oxygen. I knew that. You do know a lot about taking up oxygen in a room, that's for sure. Patience, my sprouts. Oh, man. Once I get my students to memorize the photosynthesis equation, these misconceptions should die off like weeds with a hefty shot of herbicide. I appreciate your enthusiasm and plant-based similes. But having students interpret the equation is only part of the overall strategy. Going back to Justine, she's having trouble imagining how something as insignificant as gas contributes to all that wood. Hey, I'm a science teacher, and sometimes the thought is surprising even to me. It is pretty staggering. But it can be really helpful to have students reason through other examples of simple chemical reactions in which gases contribute to solids, like rust, for example. I've got my work cut out for me, but I'm grateful for your help. Thank you, and you're welcome. Ah, it's a perfect cycle of gratitude. Now that everyone's gone, would either of you care to try my chocolate caramel bread pudding? Oh, yeah, definitely. Great! I substituted spelt for the bread, kale for the chocolate, and celery powder for the caramel. It's divine! I actually just remembered I left something in the teacher's lounge. Yeah, me too. To discover more about how kids learn science and the types of misconceptions they might have, visit us online at scienceeducation.si.edu slash goodthinking.